Tonight on NOVA, it was a stunning announcement from two respected scientists. We have established a sustained nuclear fusion reaction. The claim was staggering, but the details were sketchy. At labs around the world, the chase for fame and fortune was on. We've sat for five years on this, and I think the people who are doing the work should respect that. Had they discovered cold fusion, or was this just a case of confusion in a jar? Karl Popper's method of checking a theory began that evening on the news, at a time when labs were quiet and scientists outside Utah were enjoying a drink. Martin Fleischmann and Stanley Pons found a way to simply fuse deuterium inside electrodes. The news astonished everyone. Stan and I thought this experiment was so stupid that we financed it ourselves. The scientists were attempting for the first time to... At MIT, the experiment caught the attention of a group of undergraduates, members of a physics group called the PICAs. We got pretty excited about it. We talked about it for a long time and finally decided, let's do it. It was around 11.30 at night. We ran around the corridors looking for the materials we needed. It was sort of a scavenger hunt. It was the excitement of being at the forefront of what might become a new technology, of saying I was there when it first happened. I'm try trying to verify the claims of another scientist when those claims seemed, you know, outrageous. We probably didn't really believe it was going to work. I guess we knew that our attempt at it, it was sort of a slipshod attempt, we knew that wasn't going to work, but I think we did really want to believe. It wasn't difficult at all because it's a very simple experiment that any chemistry student would learn in their first year. So it's just finding a jar, a battery, um, and this palladium, and that's all really you need to do. It's a breakthrough in an area that we've been spending a lot of money and putting a lot of effort into. Um, it's a clever, cheap version of something that people have been piling, you know, lots and lots of effort into. Instead of, you know, it's the sort of thing where, you know, the entire nation is working at getting fusion to work and they have these huge generators and they have, I mean, the one at MIT has a whole row of municipal power generators devoted to it. They have their own special cable going over to Cambridge Electric Light Company. Um, they get blamed if there are glitches in the power line from other people because everybody assumes that it's them. I mean, this is high power, big science. And then here come along these two electrochemists and say, oh, yeah, we'll just do this, poof, you know, fusion in a jar. Um, that's really, that appeals. That Thursday night, the MIT undergraduates didn't find anything. They hadn't seriously expected to, but they had started MIT's cold fusion research effort. A photograph of their evening's work found its way to senior plasma fusion scientist Marcel Gaudreau. Late, I guess, that Friday, we were kind of like it's at the end of the day, a Friday night, and it's the Easter weekend, so everybody's kind of leaving, and there's a little bit of chatting in the hallway. And uh, lo and behold, one of the guys right there came up with this little piece of paper here, and it basically described an experiment the, the Pika people uh, had done. In, the, in one of the labs, and I was, I was just like amazed. I thought it was a very good, very quick experiment. Now, for something that was done the night of the press conference, it's very good. It had all the basic ingredients, palladium, palladium, and the heavy water, and so on. And it described how they measured the temperature, and they had a little picture. It's kind of like a page in a, in a notebook, and I think this will be something in our archives for, for a long time. I think, me, it's really what, what got me really going. I saw this and said, you know, hey, you know, these guys are really uh, rolling, and we, uh, we ought to really try to figure this thing out. You know, we'd spent years and years working on control fusion, and then suddenly you have this little jar like this, and we ought to figure out how this works. 